Okay, welcome to this tutorial on basic editing in Premiere. Now, because you have highly compressed files so they would fit on the course disk, they're in a bit of an unusual format. And to make sure that Premiere understands them properly, this is what we have to do. We have to set this as a widescreen NTSC widescreen because that'll give us roughly the right frame rate. We'll click OK. And here it is, we've got a widescreen here. Over here, we're going to import, right click, import. Down here is, if I click on the folder, click import. And here they are. And there they all are. Now, <clears throat> first, point, first thing to point out is that when we look at this, we're going to start with, I want to start with stir because it's round. It's got a circle in it. Double click on it. You see it's not round here. We have a problem. It's not going to match the footage. So Premiere is not understanding the aspect ratio of it. Right click up there. Modify interpret footage. And we will tell it to conform to NTSC widescreen. Okay, and now we have it roughly right. It's, 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 there's a little bit of black at the edges, that's okay, that's quite normal. Right, so actually we don't need that clip right now, we're going to need another one first. Let's start with end down move. Here it is, now let's modify that one, interpret footage, conform to Okay, first we need to set in points and out points. Drag, push right along. We want the steering motion, that's what we want. So from there, and we'll click I for in, space bar to play. And I want to get his hand, I want to have the cup at about. I want to just want to know where it is. I think about three o'clock is a good place for it to be. That look about three o'clock. It's a little bit hard to see because the monitor here is is uh, really small to make a small, to make a video view. Normally, I'd spread this out and about to see it a lot more clearly, uh, but then you wouldn't be able to see um, most of what I was doing. So I hit O for out. There we have it. There we're just going to drag it down into the timeline. Now it's really really small. We need to make the timeline bigger so we can see what we're doing. Right, there we have it. Now let's go and get stir. And we need to set, let's find a spot. There it is, at 3 o'clock. I think that's about the right spot. I for in. Okay, we're again. Contact spin away. Now, there we go. Now, I'm deliberately really the place we'd want to cut. Yeah, it's about there. There we have it. That's our place to cut out, over out, and we'll drag that one down as well. Now we should see. So, is that matching? I think that's a better place to cut there, actually. See how the position is not quite right. About there. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to make this bigger again. And I'm just going to drag, see the change of the cursor? Drag that that way. Drag it till it is on the playhead. Get back. Right on the playhead. And then just Drag that across to it's in the right spot. Here we go. Apart from the apart from the sound, we gotta worry about the sound later. Actually, you know what we could do? We could cut that cut that dialogue out, couldn't we? We'll find another we'll find another spot where it's at three o'clock. There. Alright, wind that back and drag it forward. Let's have a look. 
arrow keys. Well, that near enough. Okay, now we want to go now to end side. Inside move, here we go. We have to reset the pixel aspect ratio. NTSC widescreen. Okay. Double click. And now we'll find. We want to find after he's stirred and he's putting it away. Now I'm going to choose the wrong spot. Deliberately in. Out. Let's move along in the timeline a little. Whoops, too far. Drag it down. Now that doesn't work because it's, it's, it's jumped too far. So we need to get some more room in there. So we'll drag this to the right. And see where are we at now. Now that looks like it's going to be the right spot. You see when I've got the cursor there, it's ready to change the opacity. And that's the wrong cursor. I want the plain cursor. Right, there we have it. And now the movement is carrying the cut. The movement, the movement of the spoon going away matches. We see the hand moving, see the spoon moving there, and the hand is moving here, and it continues the movement. That will carry the cut nicely. Now, we do have a problem, because we can hear my voice. So we need to get rid of that. What we need here is an L cut. So let's come down, look at the audio, and I'm just going to wind the audio back. Whoops. Hold down the Option key and wind the audio back. Holding on the Option key, wind the audio forward. This is a J cut or a split edit. Try and take the spoon off. I need to get. Try and take the spoon off. That's fine. That should get rid of my voice. Whoops. See, that's doing it without the Option key. Now I hold down the option key and drag it and only the audio changes, the video stays where it is. Holding down the option key temporarily unlinks audio and video. Yeah, now this works coincidentally because it just so happens that he taps, that in this one here, he's tapping the spoon at exactly the same time, or close to the same time. If I wanted to get that really perfect, I'd come up here Show the toolbox. Tools. There they are, and I want the razor blade. And I'll cut that clip like so. And now I've got, I'll go back to the selection tool. I've got one clip here, one clip there, and one clip there. I can drag this one to another track. Now, you see that this one is linked. So if I click, this is now nothing. But this audio is linked to that video. I need to break that link. Clip. Unlink. Now I can just drag this to another track. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of room here. Let's make this a bit bigger. Now, here's another problem. This is a mono track. One speaker. This is a stereo track. So I can't grab and drag it to that track. It won't fit. So I'm going to have to... Right click here, add tracks, and I will add one, one audio track and it will be a mono track. Okay. There it is. There's our new mono track. I can drag this down and now I can move it to get the audio, get the sound matching up with that flawlessly. That works better, doesn't it? That was just that's just by chance. Now with a bit more care, you get it to match really well. 
and you, you see you, have now, you now have the basic tools. You can move the audio and video independently uh, and cut things. You've got from here, from here, up to there, to there, and down to here is your basic workflow. That's Premiere Pro CS 5.5.